much. Hi, Alia. Hi, Alec. Nice to see you. <laughs> you too. Um, thanks for sitting down today and mm -hmm. talking about your show, Get Your Fantasy Off My Ass. That is the name, yes. So I think like we should just kind of start with that because it's a great title. Yeah, Get Your Fantasy Off My Ass. You know, it actually came from... There was this woman, that I'm not going to remember her name now, who had written some form of poetry slash like some kind of article just talking about like, I guess the male gaze in general. I think it was like a series of women who were writing things and anyways, I just saw this like conversation and this kind of line where she, she it was like the end of a sentence where she's like, get your fantasy off my ass. And I uh, wrote it really big in my studio on a piece of wood. I just kept kind of writing it and I was thinking about it while I was doing, you know, all these pieces came uh, during quarantine yeah. and um, I think a lot of ideas of projection and fantasy were rising to the surface for me during quarantine where once I kind of separated myself from the world as I knew it, I realized maybe how many fantasies I had put on other people that had been put on me. So that's kind of where the name came from and a lot of these pieces kind of grew from that thought. As a person who is both uh, a painter, an artist, uh, and an actor, was there a specific reason that you found yourself diving into the painting world? Were there reasons to get there, or was it just sort of a natural thing with the space and time you had? I realized right before the pandemic I was shooting as an actor kind of non-stop, back to back, and traveling a lot, and just really pushing myself, um, maybe too much so. And I think, you know, a lot of people that I know, we all kind of were just so accustomed to that lifestyle. Like, you never know if you're going to work again, just got to keep going. Right. And so I was actually on set when the pandemic happened and we all had to go home and I had like some pickles in my fridge. I was like, I haven't even been in this house. Right. So cut to, you know, over that time, I actually didn't get into the studio. It took me a little bit. Um, I was just in my home for a while, just kind of reorganizing, uh, I was dressing up a lot. I mean, I went through lots of <laughs> stages. When I finally was able to re-enter my studio, I did have a different relationship to it because time wasn't as much of an essence, yeah. where it used to be like, oh, I'm off for a couple of weeks, I'll make sure to work in the studio as much as I can. It was more this kind of like beautiful presence of like aimless time and I could be at my studio late at night and yeah. early in the morning and sometimes I even slept there and I wasn't able to work as as an actor and I was actually really happy not to for a little while and able to sure. shut down and, and allow these pieces to kind of come to the surface in a different way. Sure. Th that time that you're talking about is interesting because I think, you know, as an actor, everything's sort of about timelines, rushing yeah. against timelines, trying to get, you know, films done on time, etc., etc. But with this open-ended pandemic, we really had no idea of what the timeline was going to look like yeah. on this. I mean, I think in the beginning people were maybe fantasizing a little bit about sort of almost post-apocalyptic kind of realities and you know what is this going to be and yeah. uh, you were able to channel that into some some positive creation. Yeah I, I'm very happy that it has a place now to be seen because I didn't yeah. know that that was even going to happen I was like well I'm just making this for me right, right. now. Let's talk a bit about um, some of the exhibitions that you've done in the past, maybe mm -hmm. catch people up a little bit on your involvement in the art world. Where did you first pick up a pen or a pencil? What was the first sort of memory of that? I always used to uh, doodle, I guess you could say, on furniture and paper, wherever I could. And um, it was always something that was kind of suppressed. It was just something I would do almost as a nervous habit. And then it wasn't until I was 18, I lived in New York and I was seeing someone at the time whose family lived in New Jersey and they had a basement that was just kind of not being used. And he used to see that I would draw all the time and he encouraged me and one day got me a bunch of canvas and there was like scraps of paper all over the floor and like debris left over and he was just like use this just do whatever you want yeah. and so i started making much bigger canvas pieces for the first time and i never really done it and it was at a period of time in life to i had just wrapped uh doing the show arrested development and i was like a kid actor and i kind of had a new relationship to acting where i wasn't sure i really wanted to do it mm. and if i was going to do it i didn't want to do it the way everyone told me i had to so i didn't work for like a year which was the longest uh, it had been since i was a kid so I took that whole year and was just painting. Yeah. 
and I started making collages and like all kinds of weird multimedia stuff. Just through happenstance and certain friends, I've I had some shows in Paris, um, in Mexico City, been a part of group shows, but it's always been through personal connections sure. that I've made. And then I had a show at the Known Gallery, I guess it was back in 2012, it was a while ago. And um, that was my first like, I'm in a gallery and right. they told me several months ahead of time and I made pieces just for that show. Sure. You know, since then, I ended up buying my own studio in Highland Park and I turned it into a gallery last year just for a night and it was really fun it was very successful for me and um, you know sold some pieces the known gallery was 2000 I said 12 right mm -hmm. but before that I'm realizing it was the first show was at Melissa Morgan Gallery in Palm Springs. It was. Which yeah, was, yeah, that was. was the very it first. It was, the very first one, yeah. yeah. I realized it was like exactly a decade ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was and it was years. like during Coachella. It was. Yeah. And I had like fun. a lot of cool like artist friends, musicians who were in town playing come by. And that was actually the very first time I like was like, I draw. Here you go. Yeah. Take a look. Well, that was yeah. exciting. I mean, that was really exciting. It was. It was you know, it was, it was incredible to, to, to actually put an exhibition in the gallery like that. A lot of the artists that we deal with are well-established artists that have been painting for 20, 30 years. Yeah. And, you know, you came in with a really fresh body of work, and we found that very exciting and invigorating, and I think our, I think our clients did as well. That was, that was a, a great exhibition. I'd love to talk about some of your influences as, as you've gotten to know the art world, artists, musicians, whatever the case is, that mm -hmm. maybe have some influence on the work you're doing. There's so many, um, you know, female artists yeah. in like the early 1900s that nobody really knew about and who just established like Hilmoff Klimt, uh, uh, Klimt and um, Leonora, Leonora Carrington, yeah. who's like an amazing, these women who I really just discovered the last several years. And there's actually this amazing artist named Agnes Pelton, who sure. actually did work in Cathedral City. Amazing. And when I saw her work, I was like, not only is she making stuff that seems so futuristic and so like-minded to what I like to do, but it was also in the desert. And yeah. so I just had like, you know, and they all have a very uh, similar connection to spirituality yeah. and dreams and this other world. And um, a lot of my work comes from dream images mm. that I start with. I find painting is a very spiritual experience. So I think it's really amazing that these female artists that maybe in history weren't really established as much as they should have been. Now we're all starting to reappreciate them. and. And I feel very, it re-encourages me when I have days where I'm just like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like, no, these women are coming through me. They want me to be here. They want me to make work. But then there's a lot of, you know, modern artists. Lorna Simpson is a, an amazing artist who's a friend of mine and her collage work and just all her, the different styles that she works with really inspires me a lot too. Let's talk about some specific pieces uh, sure. since we've, we've got an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about this piece a little oh, bit? Oh, there it is. Yeah. This piece is called Untouched. Um, I think it came <laughs> at a time when I was feeling very sexually frustrated, mm. which is a general state of mind. It was uh, one of the first pieces I started working with charcoal in a different way. Yeah. And I kind of just allowed myself to really use my weight a little bit more mm. into the canvas and to see how much it could take. A friend of mine who um, is an amazing artist in her own right and she was kind of an advisor to me and friend, Moon al is her name, and she, she was like, the places where you think it's, it's solid, she's like, there's something interesting happening behind that and yeah. to just keep going deeper into that. And I also started doing pieces on the floor and using my whole body instead mm -hmm. of just my hand. A lot of pieces came from that too, just allowing myself to really move into the piece. So this is one of those. Get your fantasy off my ass. That's a piece that is definitely a newer direction that I've been heading in. I spent time on it and then walked away from it for a while, kept yeah. it up on the wall, but just didn't work on it for a while. And then I reapproached it in a different way. That's something I've been trying to learn how to do is that not just being like, and that's done. You know, right. like right. walk away, look at it in a different perspective. There's a third figure in the center that kind of rose to the surface after yeah. I looked back That's on it. That's an incredibly powerful figure too. Yeah, yeah, somebody getting forcefully pushed away. That image came to me after, you know, many months had kind of passed. 
And then I had this kind of like fervent rush. I was like, I see him, I see him, I have to get him yeah. out of there. The colors are very comical and buoyant mm -hmm. and I really wanted to, I really enjoy things that kind of play off each other that way. That there's this kind of cartoony aspect to it on sure. one end, but then there's actually something unsettling happening beneath it. What I love so much about making paintings and drawings in general is that it's very um, subconscious what's coming out. Yeah. So I'll start working on something not knowing what it's going to be or maybe some sense of it and then all of a sudden it'll show itself to me like a dream. Yeah. And then I start to analyze what it actually means in the waking life. But what's coming out of me is very different and I don't have to use my, you know, my brain to figure out what's happening. Um, it's a lot more instinctual and sometimes more telling to me what I'm actually feeling. Sometimes it can actually even be upsetting. You know, I'll draw something, I'm like, hmm, that's not <laughs> very kosher. What's going on? But it's part of the therapy of it, I guess. The therapy of it. Yeah. Yeah. So Evolve came at the time when all the Black Lives Matter protests were actually happening. Yeah. Being in Los Angeles or, you know, any city at that time, it was a very exhilarating and scary time. You know, we all, there was like, you know, we had to be home at a certain time. Everyone was scared. Everyone was very excited. It was also the first time we had seen each other. Everyone was like out on the street. I started working on that piece around then. Then it's like, you know, like everything, it was all happening all at once. And then all of a sudden, you know, when the election was happening, I think I was still working on this piece as well as Source at the same time. Yeah, Evolve was kind of like, let's just get out of this part and get to the next stage of what is going to happen. Let's get a new president. Let's just hope things are are growing so it's nice to be on the other side of most of the you know we're not fully there yet but um, it was definitely this woman sitting kind of supine watching her hand change into this like weird scary flower um, it's funny because I showed this piece to a lot of friends and some of them everyone had very different reactions but a lot of them were weirdly frightened by it whereas I found it to be very calming and peaceful. Yeah, I don't see the scary at all. I don't see the I mean, scary at all. I kind of see big, pretty red flowers. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. I find mm -hmm. it very delicate, actually. But, um, yeah. but yeah, the, it, like the name says, it's like, it's the hope to, to, to change, just to keep changing. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So Source is a piece that definitely came about unconsciously when I started drawing it. And I saw these two forms, the one in the front kind of looks like a young woman, um, a young child. You know, it's kind of like a piece about sexual healing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Getting to a place of understanding your body and maybe healing past sexual traumas. So mm -hmm. when I see that piece, it's like, there's something very sexual and infantile about it, but in a sense of looking back on it to heal it. 